always thought the dog would die first. You have a choice, Mum had spat. Lose two stone or me. So he went and bought a bike. He had based his life on a theory. Pier theory. The pier where he'd grown up was 1,250 feet long. It had troubled him as a boy. Why not 1,500, 2,000? One day he looked at it the other way round. What if the architect had originally planned it to be 1,000 feet, and then, in an impulsive act of generosity, he'd added a bit on? Pier theory. You should be grateful for what you get. Because it's more than you were meant to. I disliked my father's lowbrow ambitions, but they drove me to pursue the life of a genius. When mum and dad retired, they left the seaside and moved to the country. They seemed happy there until I decided to join them. I thought the wilderness would help me with my ideas but Mum and Dad just seemed to get in the way. Fortunately, after I threatened to jump off a bridge, they agreed to my suggestion of moving somewhere bigger. And that is when Dad bought the dog. Mother was superstitious, and I soon convinced her it was evil. Fortunately, my message spread enthusiastically around the town and Dad was forced to take him further afield. Dad would take the dog on the bike and disappear for days. This was good for me and Mum. She could sit and eat, and I could devise my theories. One day, Dad and the dog didn't return for a week. Mother cried and I got angry. It's me or the dog, I said. Dad went upstairs and packed my suitcase. Maybe it was a good thing. I need silence to think, and Mum was a noisy eater. I decided to become a hermit, but I couldn't find a cave. I tried camping, but it didn't work without a tent. The field was cold, and the sheep were making me hungry. Eventually, I was forced to find accommodation. And that is when I bumped into Dad and the dog. They were with a woman. Her name was Maggie. I asked Dad if he'd come to get me, but he didn't seem to know. Maggie kindly offered to drop us near the house. It was a boring journey. They didn't have anything to say, so I offered to sing them a song. Dad turned and handed me a tenner. How about a sponsored silence, he said. It was nice to be back in my own bed. Dad's sponsorship was turning into a good source of income, and I found that by not talking, I had more time to think. They found the dog next to the bike. It was a quiet funeral, Dad didn't have any friends. As we left the church, I saw Maggie's car leave the car park. It was hard for Mother, but we got through. I took to astronomy and found that when you grind peppercorns onto the hob, you can make your own stars. A few weeks later, Dad's rucksack was returned. Mum was too upset to touch it. When she was at the cake shop, I emptied it onto the bed. Inside were two envelopes, stamped and addressed. One to Mum and one to Maggie. I opened Mum's. There was a letter. It said he'd fallen in love with another woman and he was taking the dog. There was £50 in cash. I was about to open the other when there was a knock at the door. It was Maggie. I had been practicing how to make tea, so I invited her in to try some. 
She seemed reluctant, but when she saw the dog, she rushed in and hugged it. I asked her what she wanted. The dog, she said. And that is when the phone call came. Mother had walked around the ladder to avoid bad luck and had been hit by a car. When I got back from the hospital, Maggie and the dog were gone. The letter to Maggie didn't contain any money. It was just a handwritten note. It said that he had let everyone down and him and the dog were going to jump off the end of the pier. Maggie wasn't in when I found her house, so I decided to put the letter through the letterbox. Ten minutes later, the door opened. The dog appeared, and the door slammed shut. I took the dog and we walked down to the pier. At the end was a sign. It said the pier had originally been longer, but the end had been washed away in a storm and never been rebuilt. We bought a cake for Mum and got on the train home.